Hello! I'm going to be doing another Source Filmmaker tutorial today. So, here I have a list of things that people requested. I don't have all of it, but here's a couple of things. And I'm going to try to get through as many of these as I can within a reasonable amount of time. So, I'm going to start off with adding custom content. So, here I have SFM Box open, sfmbox.com. I'll put a link in the description. And now, most of the stuff you'd want these days is probably on the Steam Workshop, but there are still a decent amount of things that aren't, so you would go here, or any place else that has these, but this is a good example. So I want some steampunk characters for my animations. Those look pretty good. Look at that. It's pretty classy. Um, staff pick, too. So, I download the resource. It downloads, and that takes a little while, so um, I'll skip ahead. Okay, so, that's finished downloading. Now we can open this up, and see what's here. So, You'll see there's a materials and a models folder. Don't need to go any further than that. These are the folders we need. So, to put those into Source Filmmaker, we open up the Source Filmmaker folder, which is in local disk, which would be your hard drive, program files, 86 if you're using uh, Windows 7 or 8. Um, uh, just check both of the program files. Whichever one has the Steam folder in it, then Steam apps, common, and the Source Filmmaker. Inside of here, you want to go to Game. Then you want to go to your User Mod. This is where all of your custom stuff will go. And anything that doesn't belong to any of the main games, like uh, Half-Life 2, Gary's Mod, Left 4 Dead, Team Fortress 2, all that sort of stuff. So, User Mod. Then we take the Materials and Models folder, and we can drag them into here. And that should add them to here. Now, we can go back into Source Filmmaker and hopefully find these working correctly. Let's head back over to here. So here I have Source Filmmaker already open. Um, I just pop something down just to have a basic scene ready for tutorial. So, now, when you add something new in while Source Filmmaker is still running, you need to press the rescan button for it to check for new stuff. If it's turned off, then you don't need to do that, but if it's still running and you add something new in, you need to rescan for it. So let's look for Steam. Uh, Steampunk. Let's see. The easy way to find it would be to go to User Mod. And it's going to be about the only thing in here. There we go. So now we have the models right here Pyro Butcher, uh, a Famiscout Thug, Heavy Thug. Man, that kind of coat. It's pretty nice ones. An elite soldier. An elite spy. So let's, uh, oh, Shrek. <laughs> uh, let's take a demo thug and pop him down. So, ugh, Steam messages. So there we have it. So there is, that is how you get a custom model into Source Filmmaker. Sounds will work the same way, just except for instead of putting it in the models and materials folder, you'll put it in the sounds folder. So yeah. That's that. Now, the next thing people asked me about was lip syncing. <clears throat> now this, it depends on what you want to do. You can do really basic lip syncing really easily. So, if I just have the sniper say something classic, let's see. Sniper... I Ow. hate you campers! Everybody bloody hates you! Okay. <laughs> Let's find a good one. Um, something long though, so I have a good. Crikey, ah, piss. That's holy dooly. That's pretty good. Holy dooly. So now that we got this, we fly on down here, and then we have this. We grab that. We just click on it to select it. Then we right-click on his face and extract phonemes. So it already has it, so since it's a Valve uh, sound, it'll have it already holy dooly put in there. And then, I've never found any use for these. I've tried switching around, and it doesn't seem to ever do anything. And this seems to be pretty good, for, so the defaults seem to work pretty well. So then I extract that, and... Holy dooly! So that's a basic lip syncing, but if you want to go further than that, you can refine that yourself. Because usually it does not look the best. So, so right there is H. 
So using Valve's wonderfully made um, everything, they have a whole bunch of different sounds that you would normally make while talking. So we can look through here for an H. Let's see. Uh, this is uh, not the best sorted list, unfortunately. I'm not sure there is any sorting in it. Um, there, are double H, that'll work. It doesn't seem to be doing anything, I guess it must be the same as what he's already doing, so okay. So let's put an ah in there. Yeah. Oh, I see. So that's the thing to remember with the phonemes, is that if you make a um, key on the graph editor, and you move over here, and then move this again, it's not going to ma automatically make a new key for you. You need to make a new key frame yourself. And then I need to go back and fix this one. Put it back to H. So... So that looks pretty good already, the O. But let's put our own O in there as well. Ho... Oh yeah, you need to click on it. Oh. Now he needs to go to an L noise. L's a bit odd, I've always found, to do. Well, it's because the tongues don't work too well in Source Film Maker. So it doesn't really look like an L. Ah, stop messaging me. So I, I guess that's close we're gonna get. So he's gonna go to an eh here, so. Now there's two choices here, depends on how you want your sniper to talk. You do eh or e. I like to go with a little bit more what he's actually saying, so I got to go eh instead of the correct e. So an eh would be this. Which looks like that's what he's reading. Oh, no. Didn't click on it. There. See that? So, just a quick little refining thing. Just go to each main sound that he makes with his mouth, and then add in the Valve created phonemes to uh, refine that and make it look a lot better. So, I don't think I need to go through the rest of the dually. It's exact same stuff, just go to... So there, D, I would put a D in, just to give him another example. So where's the D here? Do. Ah. It's kind of annoying. Dooley. Now, the problem is... His mouth kind of stays the same for this large portion of this, because you don't have any more keyframes there. So, we probably want to have him relax back to a default state here and here. Or actually, he says D pretty fast there, so... There. There. So his default state should probably be... Something relaxed. Um, give him a bit of a smile. That's just creepy looking, actually. But yeah. How they do they? How they do? That that didn't actually. That looks pretty creepy. Um, no smile. Yeah, actually, that's looks other. How they do they? How they do? Okay, that's too much. But you get the idea. So that's how you would basically basically lip sync. That's what I do for most of my videos. I've just started doing custom lip syncing, where I do this without the original phoneme extraction, but that's a lot. That takes a lot longer, and doesn't always look as well unless you practice with it a lot. So that's going to take some time for me to learn myself. So I can't teach anyone that yet. Um, but this is what I've found to be the best way: is to have it make the phonemes for you itself, and then refine those here in the graph editor. And I think that's a decent length tutorial for today. I covered how to import custom models and how to lip sync the characters using both the built-in phoneme extractor and the built-in phoneme sliders, which are really useful. You should, there's a bunch of good stuff in here. And even the, the visemes, I'm not sure why they're different than the phonemes, but they work just as well if you find something here that you like better. So I'm not sure why they're different, though. I have, I have seen no reason why they shouldn't both be in the same list, but I'm sure there's a reason for it. So uh, that's my tutorial for today, and thanks for watching.